Hey, I'm Ed Marcus. I'm a developer evangelist at Hedera. In the last video, you saw how to mint, burn, and transfer NFTs on the Hedera network. This video is the second part of our example. So we're going to take a step back and we're going to enable a KYC flag for Alice and Bob before we transfer the NFT. Then we're going to update one of the token properties, in this case, the KYC key. We'll do the NFT transfers like before. And the last new step is to schedule a token transfer from Bob back to Alice as we collect more royalties. Let's go. We are using JavaScript with Visual Studio Code, but you can also use your favorite IDE or code editor. And keep in mind that we also have SDKs for Java, Go, and .NET. We're gonna use the code from the previous video as a starting point. Now we have a few new modules that we'll be working with from the Hashgraph SDK. We're still working in the test development environment or the test net. We also have a few new keys, including the KYC key, which is important for this video. And these other keys like pause, freeze, and wipe, we're gonna cover those in the next video. These are the content identifiers from IPFS for our NFT metadata. And here's where we created the token last time. Notice that we added these new keys to the token create transaction. Then you see the minting, burning, and associations that we covered in the last video. Now, here's the new stuff for this second part. Since we specified a KYC key for the token we created, we have to enable the KYC flag for users before we can transfer the token to a user account. And to give you an example, you would use this if you need your token to be used only by parties that have been authorized to use it, like users that have completed a registration process or identity verification. So if you have compliance requirements, this could help. Let's enable token KYC for both Alice and Bob. Since we have multiple users, let's just write a function called KYC enable function. And we'll pass the user ID to our function. We use the token grant KYC transaction module, specify the account ID and token ID, freeze the transaction with the client for signing, and we sign the transaction with the KYC key. Then we submit the transaction to the network with the client our client gets a receipt and our function returns that receipt. So back in our main function, we use the KYC enable we just wrote for Alice and Bob. And we output to the console the transaction status for each one. We run the code. Let's make this terminal view a little bigger. And there we see the process from before, where we have the token ID, the fee schedule, the token minting and burning. And here's the new part we just did. We see that Alice and Bob have been granted KYC for our token. I also want to show you how to revoke KYC, which can be useful, for example, if the ID of one of the users expires or it's no longer valid. The important thing to remember is that if your token has a KYC key, then that key holder entity can grant or revoke KYC for users. And if there's no KYC key for the token, then none of this applies. So real quick, let's see how to revoke KYC for Alice. In this case, we use the token revoke KYC transaction module, specify the account and the token, we freeze and sign, submit and get a receipt, and that's it. Now, we want Alice to retain her KYC status. So I'm just gonna comment this out, but just wanted to show you how to disable that token KYC flag for an account. All right, step two is updating the token. In fact, we're going to update the KYC key. You would do this, let's say, if you change the identity verification providers for your token. We'll do a couple of token queries to check the KYC key before and after the update. Queries are very straightforward, and here we use a function we wrote. You can see that once you get and try the code. And we output to the console that KYC key. 
Next, we use the token update transaction module. Specify the token we're updating. Set the new property, again, the new KYC key. Freeze and sign the transaction. In this case, the admin key must sign any update or delete transactions. And if the token has no admin key, then that makes the token immutable and you wouldn't be able to change token properties. We submit the transaction, get a receipt, and output the transaction status to the console. We copy paste to do a second token query and check the new KYC key. And I'll add a breakpoint here to stop at this point. Then we just run the code, see the process, and there we confirm that the token update was successful and the KYC did change. Okay, the third and last step for today is to schedule a transaction. In this case, we're going to schedule a token transfer from Bob to Alice. This requires signatures from both parties. And in case you're not too familiar with scheduled transactions, these give you the ability to collect the signatures that are required for a transaction in the event that you don't have all those signatures immediately available. Now, at the moment, with a scheduled transaction, you have up to 30 minutes to collect all the required transactions. Otherwise, the transaction expires and it's deleted from the network. And if you actually set an admin key for the scheduled transaction, then you get the option to delete the transaction before it executes or expires. And right now you can schedule things like minting, burning, and transferring tokens, also HBAR transfers, and consensus message submissions. So with that background, let's start by creating the transaction to schedule, which is a transfer transaction. We'll transfer our NFT with serial two from Bob to Alice. And Alice will send Bob 200 H bar in exchange. Notice that we don't add any signatures here because the point is that we don't have them available at the moment. Then we schedule the transaction we just created with the schedule create transaction module. We specify the transaction to schedule. That's the one in the last step. We execute with the client and get a receipt. And from that receipt, we get two important pieces of information. One is the schedule ID and also the ID of the scheduled transaction. From there, we submit the first required signature, that's Alice's signature. For that, we use the schedule sign transaction module, specify the schedule ID to what we got in the previous step, freeze with the client, and Alice signs. Then we submit the transaction and get a receipt with the client and we output the transaction status to the console. At this point, we can check if the schedule has been triggered. The answer should be no, because Bob hasn't submitted his signature, so let's check. For that, we do a schedule info query. We set the schedule ID and execute. Then we do a bit of operational logic to check if the schedule is triggered. So we run the code. And as we expected, Alice's signature is submitted, but the schedule has not triggered. That's good. Now Bob submits his signature. So we can just copy paste the code from before, make a few changes to add Bob's name. Then we do another query to check if the schedule triggered after receiving both signatures. And finally, we do a balance check to verify that our scheduled token transfer happened 
as we expected. So we use the B checker function from the previous video and just reuse some code. We run our example one last time. And there you see the first two steps where we enabled KYC for Alice and Bob, updated the token properties by adding a new KYC key. And the third and last step is the scheduled token transfer from Bob back to Alice. So you see the schedule was triggered after signatures from Alice and Bob were received. And there we can compare the NFT and HBAR balances before and after the transfer. Alice now has the NFT and she sent 200 HBAR to Bob. Bob received 100 HBAR and the treasury received the remaining 100, which is the 50% royalty fee for our token. So that is our example for today. In case you want a written article on this example, you can check out this blog post walking you step by step on how to enable token KYC, update token properties, and schedule transactions. There's also a code check section where you can get this exact same code we wrote here, and you can start trying it out today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.